on to Member Solutions webinar. It's called Lead Generation and Appointment Setting, uh, 2022's Best Practices that will help for 2023 for sure. And we're happy to have Art Winford with us. He is the founder of CPC Ninja, which is a digital marketing firm that helps businesses grow using lead generation and appointment setting tactics. Um, he is here today to share some online ads, offers, and channels that have been working for his martial arts and fitness business clients, so we're real excited to see that. Um, he'll also be sharing strategies and methods that you can use for your business. Um, please be sure to stay until the very end. Those of you that do will be receiving a copy of the test 10 best ad templates, which includes copy and creative, and those templates you can use right away for your business. Um, also, if you have any questions throughout, please feel free to drop your question in the chat, and we will do our best to answer the question. All right, so like I said, we have a lot to unpack. I'll hand it over to you, Art. The stage is all yours. Thank you, Kristen, and, and a pleasure for having me. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. How is everybody doing today? Everybody's good? We're gonna be covering a lot of good stuff and I'm gonna just jump right into it. I just wanna make sure everybody can see my screen. Can everybody see my screen? Okay, great. What we're gonna be covering uh, we're going to be covering the best performing ads that we are using today that's generating the most appointments, the exact strategies that will make you stand out from your competition, the best ad and offer to promote if this is your first time running an online marketing campaign, the number one funnel our clients use to generate leads and appointments on autopilot, best Facebook ad campaigns to start using for next year, 2023, the number one mistake that we see martial arts schools and gyms make that hurts their marketing campaigns. The single method used to generate evergreen leads and appointments consistently over long periods of time. And if you, again, <clears throat> stay to the end, I'm gonna give you a couple of bonuses. One of them is gonna be the KPI metric sheet used to help measure your goals and set your targets. And of course, the free PDF of our 10 best ad templates including copy and creative that you can use starting today to generate leads. So who am I? I obviously am Art Winford. I founded CPC Ninja back in 2013. Uh, what we typically do, we help businesses scale their marketing campaigns using lead generation and desire-based branding tactics. Um, we currently are responsible for over $130 million in ad spend between all of our clients. And the type of channels that we typically run with is Google, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, TikTok, Microsoft Search, and even LinkedIn paid advertising. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Um, build something 100 people love, not something 1 million people kind of like. Brian Chesky. But before we do that, I just want to cover a little bit about um, these metrics that I'm going to go over with these ads that I'm going to show you that are working right now. Uh, everybody kind of know what a lead is, right? A lead, yeah, everybody know what a lead is. Leads is, it's a measurement that we use that can determine um, someone who's just interested. They're interested in learning more. They give us their details. And normally it's a micro commitment. So it's like they give us their a short form of name, email, and phone number, and they're just interested to learn more. And application is a little bit different. We measure that as someone who's filling out a much more longer form. They're, they're answering questions that we might ask and it, it lets us know exactly who they are and, and, and what they're looking for. An appointment is someone who schedules obviously to come to our class or our discovery session and uh, they book directly either online or, or, or on the phone and then they attend to show up and it closes obviously a sale. So I have a question for you if you don't mind. What is an appointment worth to you? So for example, if you were to get, let's say 10 appointments today, how many of those 10 appointments are gonna actually show up? Can anybody tell me that? Anybody at all? If you get 10 appointments through, let's say a, a Facebook ad campaign or 
a Google ad campaign, how many are going to show up? Just two? So 20%, typically a 20% show rate? Okay. Mm -hmm. Out of that people who show up, how many will become paid trials or members? Hopefully two, but probably one. Okay, so 50%. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, one says, based on when I publicly, when I public safely, usually three out of 10. So 30% for Ryan. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and of last question, those who become paid trials or members, how long will they stay? What's their lifetime value? Are they going to stay for a whole year? Are they going to stay for only a month and quit? Are they going to stay for six months? Um, what's that churn looking like? Uh, I would say 60? like like 60%, yeah, 70%, no, okay. like 60, 50%, maybe. Okay. And the reason I ask this is because these are important questions because sometimes when people are running ads, they're only measuring their cost per lead and how many leads they're getting. And a lead really isn't worth that much if they don't convert and if they convert and don't stay. So, you know, who here would rather have 10 leads and three sales and all three of them stay for 20 years versus 100 leads and 30 sales and they only stay for one month? That makes sense, right? Because mm -hmm. you're making more money long term, and that's important to think about whenever you're running these campaigns. But let's jump right into it. The best performing ads that are getting appointments. This is the ad that got one of our clients in Fort Lauderdale, 148 appointments and $2,700 ad spend. His cost per acquisition, CPA, was about $18.24. So what this means is... This ad that we ran, they click the ad, they sign up as a lead, fill out an application, and then they book an appointment on the next page, and I'll show you that in a minute. They've got 148 appointments out of this ad, and his cost per appointment, not cost per lead, cost per appointment was $18.24. Who here would be happy if you got appointments that cost only $18.24? Anybody? So what does that mean? If you got a 30% conversion rate, that means 10 appointments, three of them become a sell. How much did you spend to acquire that sell? And that's how we that's how we measure that. But let's move to the next one. Anybody know why this ad converted so well? Why did it get them 148 appointments? Is there anything that you guys can look at? This is organic, so the client is real. The trainer is real. This is a gym ad, by the way. Um, the copy, the copy is typically what really converted, along with where they're going after that, the funnel itself. But we're calling out people. We're calling out who exactly we want. We're very direct. We want five women in the near the Fort Lauderdale area who are looking to get fitter, leaner, and stronger in the next 12 weeks. So we're giving them the commitment up front too. We want at least a 12-week commitment, and then they can click to learn more. So whenever we're running these ads, typically what we seem to find is whenever we are very direct in our ad copy, exactly who we're looking for and who we're not looking for sometimes, it's really helping us out as far as getting a quality click. And that's what we want to focus on. Quality clicks lead to quality leads. Quality leads lead to appointments, lead, appointments lead to closes. And that's that's a good one. I wanted to show you the next one. Fit over 50. So this ad, he's targeting people who are over 50. That's his avatar. Um, typically, he found out that people who are over 50 stay longer and pay more money. And then we switched it from you know targeting the average guy 20 to 40, 40 or plus to an over 50s campaign. And and typically, that's that's what his model looks like. This ad, just alone, this stock image ad alone got 150 appointments, 2,800 spin, cost per acquisition, $18.66. What made this ad get that? Anybody know? Can anybody guess? 
We're targeting people who are over 50, so it's speaking directly to a market. What's the offer? Complementing transfer, transformation session. So nothing really big. I think what really got this ad to work good is because the market that he's targeting, not a lot of competitors in his area are targeting people who are over 50, and they're not really speaking to that, to that market. So there's a chance that that market, ideally, who are looking for help, could feel like this might be a good fit for them. And then they click to, to go to the next page and then they learn more. Here's a martial art one. Halloween special, get four weeks. This was just recent. Get four weeks kids martial art classes for free. 410 appointments, $2,240 ad spend. $5.46 cost per appointment. In our in our model, that's pretty damn cheap because um, normally we're getting around, give or take two, three dollars in lead, roughly 10, 15, 20 dollars in uh, uh, an appointment, sometimes more. But for this one, it's cheap. Any idea why? Well, when we're running these offers, we like to use scarcity. And we like to make it seasonal, something that's brand new, and you don't have a lot of time to, to convert. And people like free stuff, absolutely. This hook is free, right? And their model, their sales model is getting them in the door for free. They're not necessarily waiting the whole four weeks to sell them, but they're giving them some time to like it, learn it, love it. And then they're normally, that their, their really sweet spot is selling it in that first week, just because they are excited still. They're in that excitement mode. People buy off of emotions. So Halloween special, Christmas special, New Year's special, it all tells these people that you don't have a lot of time to sign up. Halloween's over. We're not running this no more. So limited time. And then that's why we really get a, a huge response in a short amount of time. So what's the next offer? Thanksgiving. Um, we did another one that was Black Friday. Um, and it's, it's important that you have really good offers that are time-based and that work. Ryan said, should you put a limit on this sort of thing? I usually do deals during that time, but not free. Yeah, definitely. This is just a model that works for this client. You don't necessarily have to go with free all the time. Some clients of ours, we don't never use free because it typically brings in a free type of mentality. And some people, there's a percentage of people that are going to be just free and just that's all they want is free. So, yeah, you don't have to necessarily always do free. You can do the same offer, but offer like um, some clients, we offer like a uh, a pay trial um, to class in uniform, you know, 1995, some type of low barrier offer that gets them in the door and then they upsell them um, once they talk to them face to face. Here's another one, 80 appointments, uh, cost per acquisition, $24, $1,921 ad spend. So this got them 80 appointments, $24 in the per appointment, and it was a back to school special. Um, back in, when back to school was, was coming up, we would run offers like this with a little board in the background. Everybody likes this board in the background and school buses, and it works. Um, <clears throat> and you can kind of read the copy. We've got templates that I'll send you as well. Here's another one, 192 appointments, uh, $3,900 ad spend, $20 cost per appointment. This is a stock image too. Sign up for the free six-week challenge. The free six-week challenge is a famous offer. A lot of gyms run it before. Um, originally, it came from a coach, and then that coach went from gym launch to Alex Promosi was running that. The model is uh, you sign up for six weeks, you sell them in the first week, but they have to pay a deposit to you know get their commitment. And then obviously, if they finished it, they can send them a refund for doing it. However, they could just use that refund for the next month. And that's one of the sales models that some of our clients run. Um, this is one of those ads that we've been running forever. We've been running for, the, I think we've been running this for almost 10 years. It just still works. Another one, uh, same thing, same offer. 
181 appointments, $20 cost per appointment, um, just a change of image, stock image. Women over 50, 39 appointments, $813 ad spend, $20 cost per appointment. Get four free weeks of martial art classes for free. 100 appointments, $2,900 ad spend. Uh, cost per appointment was $29 for this one. Back to school special, bulletin board with the bus, 10 spots available. Uh, 83 appointments, 1,900 at spend, $22.89 cost per appointment. And then here's another Halloween special we ran. This is an organic, organic one right here. These are actual real clients. And um, 90 appointments, $1,250 spend, and $13, which is pretty cheap, $13 cost per appointment. So you see, we're measuring our ads on appointments. We're not like we care about leads, but it's an appointment's more important. And that's what we want to measure it. Besides the sale, cost per sales is the number one thing. But if we can't really determine that in our ads yet, then we go to the next one, which is appointment. Listen to your customers, not your competitors, Joel Spokesky. So I wanted to cover um, the exact strategies that will make you stand out from your competition. This is important because most advertisers are preaching the same message to the same market and are not being unique about their services. Be different. Research what your competitors are doing. Don't focus on just doing it better. Focus on doing it differently. For example, if you have competitors who are offering a free six-week challenge, then what will make you stand out from them is offering a contest. Free $1,000 giveaway to the best six-week transformation. We had a, a client who actually ran that offer. He's got, he got literally a dollar leads, you know, way back in the old days when uh, it used to be, you know, really, really cheap leads. And it worked really well. And all he did was he'd say, hey, uh, the, the best transformation wins a thousand bucks. People signed up like crazy. And after that, obviously, he converted a, a, a huge percentage of these people from that six-week transformation. So that's just one offer that he ran that, that was really good. But you see how it's, it's not too much different than just a free six-week challenge, but it's actually, it's the same thing. You just change the title of the, cook, of the book. <clears throat> how do you research your competitors? Some of you might already know this, but what I like to do, my clients do, is you look at your competition in your area, in your city, write them down, and then research their Facebook page. Once you go to that page, click the About button, Page Transparency, and if it, it's going to say if they're running ads or not, this page is currently running ads, click See More. Once you do that, you'll be, you'll be able to see all the ads that they're currently running right now. If you see some of your competitors running ads, we like to use a software called Adverse Suite. And with Adverse Suite, we're able to know a little bit more about the ad, how long they've been running that ad. It's likely that if this client right here has been running their ad since December 8th, 2020, it's highly likely that that ad is working, right? Because they probably would have turned it off by now. And that's important. You want to see what offers ads they're running. Don't copy it, but just see what they're running and how you can, you can approach your, your market differently. Try to talk to a smaller market. I know a lot of people by default target either their entire city or a radius around their, their area, which is fine. Um, what we do that's different than that is we do do the radius, we do do the cities, the zip codes, but we do smaller areas per at set level. And then we approach that market with a specific message. So if we're able to target a two mile radius around a specific working district, originally the advertiser was trying to penetrate a more broader market resulting in less responses. He was also competing with 12 other gyms 
in that area for ad space who are running the same offer. We were able to get him a 6x return uh, from his appointments. That means he got six more, six times more appointments with the same budget he was spending just because we targeted a more smaller area. And then we approached that market with a different type of message. So you can see right here, this is an example actually, working near the Puff Town area, then this may be for you. Reason is we're located right off of Shadowline Drive, the building next to Harris Tita. Yeah, that's us. Come check us out and register for our free three week bikini lean program. So what I'm doing here is we called out the market because it's an area where people are working, working near the Puff Town area. The reason is because we're right off of Shadowline Drive. That's the area where it's at. Everyone knows where Shadowline Drive is. The building next to Harris Teeter. Everyone knows where Harris Teeter is. Well, most people do. And then, yeah, that's us. So that's more relevant. More relevant, increased the click-through rates, click-through rates increased, decreased the cost per acquisition. So a good little trick right there. Simple works and ugly converts. That came from me. Um, this is for people. How many people, who here is, is the first time running their ad? Just, just raise your hand if you have never ran ads before or if you're considering running ads or just type in the chat box if you don't mind. Or who here, everybody here seems to be running ads already, right? Pretty much. considering but had trouble not running ads right now. Okay, well, this is a good one. If you haven't ran ads before, um, if you are considering running ads and you're on a budget and you just wanna test the waters with a small budget, <clears throat> consider running a challenge style ad. Um, and this is typically for gyms, obviously, and for martial arts schools. Challenge style ads for some strange reason works. And, and typically it doesn't always have to be free. You don't have to do free, but uh, put a timeline on there. You know, don't tell people to sign up for six months, but put a micro commitment timeline just to get people in the door. And then obviously you can sell them. If they like it, you can sell them into other programs later. Use lead forms. Um, we use lead forms, but normally we like to send people to a website or a funnel. But if this is your first time, do lead forms. Lead forms will get you the cheapest cost per lead. But make sure you ask a question or two that can qualify that lead. Um, and Facebook will reward you for keeping people on their platform instead of taking them off of it to your website. Uh, a lead form is a form where people can fill out directly on the ad itself if you, if you didn't know. So you can kind of see this example right here. This is a lead form. They click the ad and then they can fill out their form directly in the ad itself. They don't have to go to no page or, or website. And then after that, they hit submit and then the information is, is sent to you and now you can call this lead or redirect them to an appointment calendar or application page. So this is some examples for challenge ads that we you guys saw already. Uh, Halloween special, get four weeks kids martial art classes for free. Um, active over 50s enrollment starts now. Um, these challenge ads, something, most of the time, they often include time frames. So it's important to think about that. 12 weeks, 8 weeks, 21 day, 28 day, 30 days. Um, you know, be different. I think we ran something for Brett. Um, it was 18 for 18. 18 days for 18 bucks. Get people in the door. And then he sells them after that. Um, so the number one funnel, our clients use to generate leads and appointments on autopilot. You're going to want to pay attention to this one. So we have different types of funnels we run. And, and most of the time, the funnels that we see that work the best and always has is the old school appointment setting funnel. If you can see the diagram right here, a Facebook ad, they click it, they go to a landing page. Once they sign up on that landing page with just their name, email, and phone, they go to an application page. But when that happens, we're talking to them. We're sending them some follow-up text message drips, follow-up email drips, 
And in this part of the process, we're not selling them. We're just giving them information. We're answering questions. And, and that's it. The application stage is different. They fill out an application form. They're a little bit more serious. So if they fill out that long form and go to the next stage, the appointment, then we're sending them some follow-ups and saying, hey, you just filled this out. Click this link to go to that appointment. Watch this testimonial video. Email drips, more testimonial-based proof. Um, want to make sure that they know that we are a brand, we can help them, and then just push them back to that appointment stage. We're more aggressive. If they book the appointment, that means they fill out the lead form, they fill out the application form, they booked an appointment with you and they're ready. Okay, let's send them some follow-ups to, to join. Just like you got follow-ups for the webinar, follow-ups to join. Uh, send them some valuable content about who you are, what you do. Uh, make sure you also send them some testimonials and case studies. It's gonna help. The next stage is show and then obviously close. That's typically the standard funnel that we use that works the best. So you can see the example here, um, 12 week challenge. Women, they fill it out, go to the application stage, book, uh, uh, fill out the application, go to the appointment stage, book the appointment, go to a thank you page that has a before and after. So let me show you. I did it in the video to make it, you know, this is one of the funnels right here. They can fill out their name, email, phone. We got some useful information for them. What's our program is about, what's entitled to them. And then they click register your interest. And then they can fill this out as well as a pop-up. Now the application stage. This is one of the applications that one of our clients used. You'll see how a little bit in-depth it is. And every application is custom based on what you want to ask them and also your sales model. So you can take a look and see what we're asking them. A whole bunch of stuff. We're just making sure that they, we are, we're a good fit for them just as much as they are a good fit for us. Um, we're also, you know, getting some more information that's going to help our sales call with them. They fill that out. Boom, boom, boom. And then the last question, as you can see, you know, are you willing to invest into yourself or into the next three months? <clears throat> Sometimes our clients put the price right there. They just put it right there. And then if people say yes, they know that they prioritize those people. Like they don't really have to sell anyone who already saw your price, know how much it cost, and said yes. You just call them and get them in the door. Book them in for Thursday. But um, every model is different. What we see that works the best is if you are not very comfortable with selling, and if you don't, if you can't, you don't feel like you can sell that good. Ask more questions. If you have an amazing sales system in place and you can sell everybody that just talks to you. You know, just ask a few questions, like one or two. What are your goals? Why is this important to you? And then call them. The appointment stage. Typically, this is the appointment stage. Use a Calendly or, or book an appointment software or, or whatever you, you guys use. And then they can just book. You know, don't ask for too much of a commitment. <clears throat> and then, boom, they book for whatever time and slot that you have available. And then immediately after they book, then they go to thank you page. Congratulations, we have you booked. Pour for and after. Sometimes on this page, we like to keep them flowing. We flow them to a video, or we flow them to a website, or flow them to some useful information, just to let them know what's about to happen next. For this particular client, um, he just wanted to show them a before and after. He wanted to show them that he can really get results, and that's what they see. Uh, one of our best funnels is also a quiz funnel. We like to ask questions. Asking questions will help you better with your sales process. So this is a short quiz that we did for a martial arts school. Um, typically, it's a really micro commitment step. Complete this short confidence quiz. How would you describe your child? Shy, above average, very confident, and outgoing. Have you considered martial arts to increase their confidence and discipline? Yes or no? And then what's the number one benefit you wish your child to gain from martial arts? So they fill that out. And then immediately after that, we have a pop-up 
asking them for the name, email, phone, and then they go straight to the next page where they can pay. And then they can pay a, a short micro commitment, 25 bucks to get them in the door. And even though it's a micro commitment, it's a financial micro commitment. So you're going to likely get someone to show up if they paid, even if it's 25 bucks. So they pay right here, the order form, and then right after that, then they can select their start date. So this is kind of how the funnel looks. Um, survey, once they fill that out, we email and text message drip them to go back to the sales page. That sales page, which was this, and this, this is actually the sales page right here. You just scroll down and, and that goes to that and then goes to that. And then once they click that button, then they go to the order page where they can pay. And then after that, thank you page. Not viewing your email marketing as content is a mistake. Chris Baggett. The number one thing that we always see people doing Every single client that I've signed on, every single agency that they've came from has been making this mistake. And typically, they fatigue their audiences. So if you've run in Facebook ads before, you know how easy it is to, to fatigue a local market, right? You're running ads, and then the ads are working, and then they stop working. They got to change it. Change the ads. It works a little bit more, and it stops. A little bit more, stops. And then... No matter what you change now, it ain't working. And you wonder, like, what you got to change the offer and then, you know, chase after your lead cost. And, and what we typically do that's different than that is we run campaigns that focus on building relationships. And I'm going to cover that in a minute. Most people who are running offers like this over a period of time, they fatigue and this increases your cost, fatigues your audiences, hurts your brand reputation. Because when people see your ads, like, okay, here comes something that's going to try to sell me again. And then markets won't respond to your ads like they used to anymore. Anybody having that issue or had that issue before? Be honest. Somebody has. I know it. So, what we typically do that helps fight this is use what we call the ADA model. This was created a long time ago, but we used it with, with our ad campaigns. And what it is is awareness, interest, desire, action. I'm not going to jump too much into it because it could be a whole new webinar about it. But what we normally like to do is we run content to the market. Content. We're not asking them to sign up. Or, or buy anything. We're running video ads or image ads that have are giving them some useful information. So, for example, this client of ours, he sells an eight-week runner's program. His avatar are people who are running, and he wants to help improve their running. And what he we did for that is before we launched any lead generation style ads, we ran some content to them. We ran some ads that says, hey, do you ever have sore knees from running? Here's the possible cause. Pushing a foot like a calf raise, move forward. Solution, utilize the bum and hamstrings to drive the leg back and down. That's it. They're not going nowhere. They're not signing up or nothing. And all this is doing is when people, when you give them the high valuable content, it's kind of building a relationship with them to where they trust you as a brand. They're trusting the content that you're giving them and it's helping them out. Now, if you run enough of that, it's going to start getting people curious about what you do. And now you can move to the next stage, which is interest. And interest kind of explains what you do, who you are, a band introductory video. You know those videos where you show the camera, it's walking into your gym or your school, it's showing people training, it's showing the owner, it's showing the instructor, it's showing kids having fun. Then it goes to a testimonial video of a parent or a client. Um, who's getting great results. It's kind of like a brand intro video, and that's what interest is. We're trying to introduce to them who we are, what we do, and how we can help them. And then, of course, desire. 
the desire stage is the next one where we're getting more into how we help people. We're getting into giving them case studies and testimonials, but we're not just telling them a regular old ad of someone who just lost 10 pounds or a kid who's now, who wasn't confident and now is confident. We're getting to the story. And the story is where they came from, what made them want to do it, um, after they did it, how they feel, and why they recommend that you should be doing this too. And that tells the entire story. And if that story is told correctly, it could resonate with that market because it's it's matching what that person feels and it's touching into an emotion like a movie. And that's important. And that's what we like to use in our marketing because it helps kind of build that brand's uh, reputation and it helps people have confidence into to moving forward with that brand. So <clears throat> a couple of things that we like to use is videos. Videos always work best. It's cheaper as well, too. Um, images work too. Uh, we might send them to the website for blogs if, if, we, if we are taking them off of the website. Um, we like to use lead magnets, such as giving them a free seven day meal plan or giving them a, a free, um, you know, whatever. They can download it with their PDF and then we got their email address that we can, you know, talk to them in our emails. Um, we like to ask questions all the time. Surveys help a lot. We ask them, you know, why is it that they that interest them? You know, who likes apples and oranges? Who likes oranges? Who likes apples? You like apples? Okay. Red or green? Red? Big or small? Big? How much are you willing to spend on those apples? $3 per five pounds, $3 per 10 pounds. Okay, I got 10 pounds that I can save for $1.50. And, and that's just kind of how we do it. We understand where the market is, and then that's how we can, you know, move them, understand exactly what they want, and then position our copy based on what they say they want, if that makes sense. Now, you might be wondering, okay, how does that even lead to, to not fatiguing your markets, right? Well, whenever we do this, we divide our markets into personas. Let's just say, for example, persona one is men, persona two is women. We are not going to market to both of them because we're going to fatigue them. We're going to only market to the women. So, for example, let's say persona one is men. Persona one, we're going to market our 12-week challenge or our kids, um, you know, two-week trial on November. That's all we're going to do. November, we're going to market our lead generation campaign to persona number one. Now, with Persona number two, um, and I got that reversed, I'm sorry. We're going to market persona number one with Ada, persona number two with our 12-week challenge, for example. Now, with persona number, the other persona, persona number one, we're not going to run leads to them. We're only going to run content to them. So for the whole entire month, persona one is just getting nothing but content. So you got to imagine by the time December comes, when we rotate this, and now we're gonna run our 12 week challenge to persona one and our eight at the persona two, we're rotating it. Imagine now how much they're gonna be more responsive to your, to your ads just because of all of the high viable content that you gave them. All the testimonials that they saw, all the blogs that they read, all the videos that talk about how you can help them that they watched. Imagine how it's going to be now. So you see how we combat fatigue through audience rotation. And typically, it's pretty simple. We rotate our audiences, and it's not always perfect. It's not always per month scale. Um, sometimes it's per two months. Sometimes it's per month and a half. It just depends on our budget and the size of the audience. But if you do it like this, you're going to see you know, your offers last longer. You're going to see your cost per acquisition quite stay stable. It might go up a little bit and down a little bit, but it ain't going to be crazy out of control. And, and that's important. So once again, for November, we might market ADA to persona number one, which is the content stuff, and then our lead generation to persona number two, which is getting leads. Then next month, we rotate it. So for December, 
we will run Ada to persona number two this time, and then our lead generation to persona one. And we'll just rotate, rotate, rotate. That makes sense at all? Yeah, that's how you do it. Um, this will combat fatigue on a new level, allowing you to keep a consistent cost per acquisition while scaling your campaigns. <clears throat> you see this example right here, core offer 12 week challenge active, ADA, and then I'm, this is only gonna be running blogs for this one. And we're running it at the same time, but one market is not seeing the 12 week and the other one is not seeing the ADA so that we can rotate this. The ADA formula principle is important and that's our core element in our agency. We like to focus on uh, building the brand, um, the structure of building relationships. Uh, number one, audience building, video view lists, website custom audiences, which is people who come to our pages and funnels and website who we can retarget with the pixel. And then every webinar registrants, people who join some of our webinars, uh, there are ever webinars, the ones on repeat, and then we can build th that list of people who join that. Number two, obviously list building, email list building, and sometimes bot subscribers. Number three is fan building, uh, building a stronger social presence. Some people, if, they, if you don't have more than a thousand fans, they don't wanna go with you. Sometimes they just make decisions off of that. And we focus on, on fan building as well too, but mostly audience building and list building. Okay, do I have any questions so far? No, I just ran through it pretty fast. Yeah. Um, Ryan, sorry, this was a late one. What would you suggest for a martial arts school? I mean, a regular gym are easier with weight loss and so forth challenges. You're asking about uh, the offers, right? Is that right? Mm -hmm. What we would suggest for a martial arts school that we see that's working the most are uh, two week paid trials. Um, definitely, but you have to have a good sales model in place for this one. Definitely the free, the free kids four week challenge, 28 day challenge. Um, kids confidence booster, um, two free classes plus uniform for 19 bucks. We see typically those offers uh, position really well. Um, one of the other offers that we see that work really well is the case study funnel. And it's just a parent talking about where their kid was and now where they are. And that's based off of a survey we ran Confidence, confidence, confidence. That was the, the key word that we heard a lot that people wanted. They wanted their kid to improve their confidence. Um, we didn't hear people talking about bullying, uh, uh, bully controlling or none of that stuff. We hear them talk about skyrocketing focus and confidence. And so we did a uh, confidence style hook and, and that case study we ran, woman, just a video and a button. They watched the video about a uh, parent who's talking about her kid who signed up, how he is, how he was to be and how he is now, and then a button for them to learn more. And it worked. Um, but two weeks paid trials, four weeks free kids transfer, uh, or kids challenges, we're seeing those work. Um, we had another question, Chris, I think yes. it was the... There was another question that came in and it is, I need to learn how to Facebook market outside of my five mile radius, preferably ah, yes. to specific neighborhoods and zip codes. How do I go about that? Oh yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. So I'm inside of Facebook right now, as you can see. If you go to the ad set level. So this is the campaign level. This is the ad set level. And then this is the ad level. If I go to the ad set level and scroll down, you're gonna see down here where it says locations. If I click on edit under the locations, um, you know, somebody give me a, a city name or something. Let's do this. I'm, I'm gonna do 
Uh, anybody want to give me a business address? Or a fake one? One, two, one. Uh, okay, thank you. One zero zero five South Sakhalid. Is that right? Drive. Paris, Texas. One zero zero five South. I can't find that one. One now? Okay, no problem. E G I A T E. Is that right? For the spelling? And most of the time, uh, these addresses show up, but if you don't see them so show up, you can target a radius around that particular area and then it'll hit your, your address. But addresses were easy to, to use sometimes if just because, you know, they're right there, right? Let me just do one that I know is going to show up. East Clemensville. All right. So, for example, when I type in that address, it defaults me to a 10-mile radius. Now, I can narrow this to that five miles. I can narrow this even to one mile. Now, if you wanted to target five miles or out, it's pretty easy. Around that area, just click the drop pin. Let's say your address didn't pull up. Just try to zoom in and find it or a reference point from it. And then just drop that pin on your location, just like that. It's going to give you longitude and latitude. And then you can dial that into your five miles. And then if you want to target outside of that, you can raise that to whatever you want. If you want to target specific areas around that, you can drop a pin and put it around there. Let's say I don't want to target the airport because I know that I'm going to get travelers in my ads and I want them to see my ads. So I'm going to drop a pin on the airport. I don't want the people in the airport to see me. And then I'm going to reduce that to about a mile. Let's do two miles just in case. Two miles and make sure it's not overlapping with that circle. And now I'm going to exclude it because I don't want these people to see my ads. So they're not going to see it anyway because the circle isn't hitting them. But let's say if I raise this to, you know, to obviously to, to 20 miles or, or whatever, it's going to start hitting them too, right? And I don't want them to see it. So you can exclude certain areas with that pinpoint. You can even put in your, your zip codes, of course, 27106. And then that's a zip code that you're going to hit. The problem with the zip codes is if you want to get a big enough audience, you got you got to put a lot of zip codes in. So we like to use uh, radiuses, one mile radiuses versus zip codes. We typically see it work better. Um, but I hope that was able to answer your question. <clears throat> so I couldn't see your address, Ryan, but let's just say a reference point south. Uh, can you all hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I've, I've, I've just got a new computer, so I'm not sure what it's uh, able to do. <laughs> Um, it's, I, I, I completely messed up, but it's a one zero zero five South collegiate drive. It's right across from a, a college. South. Oops. Look at me. South. Co <laughs> <laughs> yeah. South collegiate drive. That's it right there. Isn't it? Yes. Okay. So let's say that one zero zero five, I couldn't, it didn't show up. Right. I just type in the road. I click it. And then boom, and let me get rid of this stuff right here. So I type in that. If I zoom on in, you somewhere around here, right? Yeah. Oops. 
and that's how you can find yourself. You just scroll around and, and let's say, uh, where are you at specifically right here? You're on this road. Uh, it's actually, it's, it's just a little south of where I am. So, I mean, just uh, on the other side of Clarksville Street there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right, right there. So you're inside of the circle. Yeah, I'm, I'm like just, uh, just on the other side of that, uh, that street of Clarksville. Oh, okay. Cool. So you're, you're so right here. You can see how it's a one mile radius. So that's how I can target it. But let's say you you want to target these areas over here. You can, and you got a pretty decent size. But what we do that's different is we would make one ad set talking to these immediate people, and then we would make another ad set talking to these people over here in Paris. And then we'll call that area out and say, hey, are you living or do you work in or around this area? And a reference point would be, I know Paris is the whole city, right? So a reference point would be, you know, Boham Street. Do you work Bonham. off of Boham Street? Bonham Street. Do you work off of West Washington Street? Do you know where it's at? Do you work near there? This is for you. And then because we're calling out relevance points, they're like, whoa, this is different. I'm right there. What is this about? And it gets their attention. They click it. Click-through rates are, are more higher just because we're more relevant versus, you know, a lot of people, they just do that and then call it a day. <laughs> so that's another trick of the trade. Yeah. Um. I hope that was able to answer the original question. Anybody else have any questions? So that bonus ad templates that I promised, I'm going to go ahead and post that in the, uh, the chat box. Is that okay to post it in the chat box? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to hyperlink it so that everybody has it. If you guys click that link, it should redirect you straight away to um, to download those templates. Just download that PDF <clears throat> and the copy and everything, and then just fill in the blanks or, or change the copy to, to, match your, to match your brand. These are our top best ad templates that we're using today that are working really well. Um, Change it as you see fit. Uh, change the images and, and everything if, as you see fit. Just test different images. Don't just be reliable on one. At least test about five, five images with the same copy and then see which image you know, gets the best results. Uh, I clicked on it. It says this page cannot be reached. <laughs> yeah, let me make sure. The hyperlink, yeah, it worked for me. It works for you, Donnie. Okay. Let me give you this link, uh, Ryan, to see if you can. Hopefully, this will work for you then. It worked for everybody else? Yep. It works okay. here. Try this one. It'll take you straight to Google Drive. <clears throat> it shouldn't require you to sign in or nothing either. Okay, does that work for you? Okay. Got it. Great, great. Okay, and then another one, uh, uh, the KPI metric sheet used to help you measure your goals and set your targets. Uh, you can type this in your browser, just download.cpcninja.com forward slash gift. And this gift will take you straight to download it. I'll type that as well. All right, I'll put it in the chat box as well.
So what that sheet takes you to is particularly this right here, and you can download it. And, and what we like using this for, we like using this to, to count numbers. We love numbers. Um, you fill this in, how many clicks you're getting, how many leads you got from your ad, and then it'll give you your conversion rate. If you're using the application model, how many applications you got. If you're not using that model and you're just using leads and leads straight to appointments, just put in the same as your leads, 63. <clears throat> and then of course, how many appointments out of that? And then how many sales you got out of your appointments? And it's gonna give you your percentages and everything, how much you spent, and then it'll give you your cost. So you can kind of see right here, we have some targets. 25% conversion rate, that's our goal. You can see that out of the clicks, we only got 63 leads, so that's not 25% yet. That's only 9%. Out of the leads, how many applications we got? Let's say we got 25, that's 40%. That's not our target yet, 50% is our goal for that. And out of that 50%, we want 50% sets, which is appointments. So we've got 28% that were set. That means that's 50% goal is still not hitting. We're at 28% because we got seven appointments out of 25 applications. And how many sales we got? 29% sales rate. So two sales out of seven appointments. So we're hitting our target 20%. And this is just our thresh marks. Like once you hit your targets, set them above that and make sure you work backwards not forward. So focus on your purchase rate first, then set rate, then application rate, then lead rate. Because sales are more important than leads. Don't y'all agree? Yeah. And you can see the cost. Cost per lead, cost per application, cost per set, cost per purchase. So let's say I got four sales, cost per purchase went down to 250. So what's that meaning? Um, how much are they paying you? If they're paying you more than 250, then you've made a return on your investment in the first month. That's just basically how it how it, how it works out. <clears throat> Automatically populate it for you. And then finally, last but not least, we have another tab called calculator. And you can set this up. And we we normally use Zapier. People love Zapier. Everybody loves Zapier. We use Zapier. We love Zapier. We use Zapier to to kind of zap this information automatically so we can look at our stats on a per month level. So how much, how many leads we got, how many applications we got, sets, purchases, and if we're using the webinar model, registrants, attendees, sets, sales. Cool. Christine, I think we're right at the... Yes, we're at the, the yeah, yeah one hour mark. Yep. And I think we've answered all the questions that have come in. I want to thank you all for joining and thank you, Art, for all of your information and great tips. I hope everyone got a lot of value out of it. The two resources that Art provided, the metric KPI metric sheet and the best templates will be sent to you along with today's recording in email. So please look out for that email. And again, Art, thanks for the, the great content. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a great day. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thanks so much. Take Bye, care. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.